Hey guys, welcome back to HackPy, the tastiest way to learn hacking. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up GoFish inside Chasm workspaces. And if you haven't heard of it, GoFish is a super handy phishing framework that lets you create and manage phishing campaigns through a really clean web interface. And Chasm Workspaces, that's a platform that lets you run containerized desktops right in your browser, which means you can run GoFish in a private, isolated sandbox and control everything through your browser. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's get into it. We are going to use a cloud server for this video. You can use your own device as well, but from hacker's perspective, cloud is better solution with the public IP and all. So here I'm using my own Ubuntu VPS from Contabo, and it has eight gigabytes of RAM and 75 gigabytes of NVMe. And as you can see, my server is up and running. So let's go to our Kali machine and connect to our private server via SSH. And then we will install the Chasm workplace on our server. And guys, don't worry about the IP and the ports I'm exposing here. It's a, a temporary server and I will kill it once we're done with this tutorial. As you can see, now we are connected to our VPS. Let's install Chasm workspaces. It's actually really simple. You just download the installer, extract it, and run the setup script. Once it's done, Chasm will give you a set of default login details right in the terminal. Don't forget to save those, you'll need them to log in. After that, just open your browser and go to the local address it gives you. You should see the Chasm login page ready to go. And here we go. This is our Chasm dashboard. We are going to get a Ubuntu image from the workspaces. So here we can find bunch of containers of different systems. So we are going to select this Ubuntu Jammy image and click install. And you can see here there is a warning icon on the top and that means our image is still provisioning. So wait for some time. And yes, now we can spin up our Ubuntu image. And you need to allow pop up in the browser. And yeah, now we have our secured Ubuntu VM inside our cloud server using Chasm Workspace. Now let's install GoFish inside a Chasm container. Since there's no official GoFish image for Chasm, we'll build our own, but don't worry, it's super easy. Once that's up and running, open a terminal inside the container and grab the latest GoFish release from their GitHub. After downloading it, unzip the files and you'll have everything you need to get started. And by default, GoFish only listens on 127.0.0.1 not 0.0.0.0. That means you can't access it from the browser in a Chasm session. So go to the configuration file and change the listener. And just run the GoFish server and that's it. You'll be able to access the GoFish admin panel right from your browser at port 3333. The default username is admin and the password will show up in the terminal when you start the server.
Now here's the cool part. Once GoFish is up and running, you can save this session as a custom image in Casm. Head over to the admin section, find your running Ubuntu session, and click Create Image. Once the image is created, go to the Workspaces tab, find the new image, and click Edit. Here, you can set it up so that GoFish starts automatically every time you launch a session. All you need to do is add a simple command in the Docker configuration. It tells Casm to run the GoFish binary as soon as the container starts. Save your changes, and that's it. From now on, whenever you start this custom image, GoFish will launch automatically and be ready to use. And there you go. You've now got a fully working GoFish setup running inside a browser-based container thanks to Chasm Workspaces. It's clean, isolated, and easy to reset. Perfect for safe fishing simulations and red team practice. Okay, enough being an engineer, let's be real hackers now. We've got GoFish up and running, so let's start hacking. Now we need ingrok. If you've never used it before, ingrok is a tool that lets you expose a local web server to the internet through a secure tunnel. Since GoFish is running locally on our machine, ingrok helps us make it accessible over the internet so our phishing links actually work when sent to victims. Without ingrok, people outside your network won't be able to access your GoFish phishing page. So let's set it up and tunnel our GoFish server to the internet. Now that I've downloaded the package, we can extract it using these commands. Just follow along with the terminal. And don't worry, you can find all the commands in the description. To run ngrok, we need an auth token. To get that, create a free ngrok account. You can even use a temporary disposable email if you like. Once you sign up, you'll get your auth token. Now run this command to add the auth token to the config file. And don't worry about I'm exposing my auth token. It is temporary and I will revoke it. Okay, now we're ready. Let's run ngrok and start listening on port 80. So now we've got the ngrok public link and it's pointing to our local host on port 80, ready and listening for incoming connections. Let's go back to GoFish dashboard and create the sending profile. The sending profile is where we configure the email account that will send our phishing emails. This includes the SMTP server details, the sender name, email address, and any authentication settings. Basically, this is how GoFish knows who to send emails from and how to send them. You can use your own SMTP server or any service that allows email sending. In our case, we'll use the Gmail's SMTP server. And the password we're entering here is not your regular Gmail password, it's an app password, which you can generate from your Google account security section under two-factor authentication. For this demo, I'm using this simple email setup, but in real world attacks, hackers usually use spoofed email addresses, ones that look almost identical to legitimate ones. And in the next video, I will show you how exactly we can spoof the emails and do the phishing. So keep supporting guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. In the SMTP from field, we're gonna name it Instagram security, and then place the actual email address inside angle brackets like this. This way when the user receives the email, they'll see Instagram security as the sender name, not the actual email address, unless they expand the details. All right, now save the profile and let's create the email template. The email template is what the victim will actually see in their inbox. It's the body of the phishing email, including text, links, and HTML formatting. I already have a template for the Instagram landing page. Go to this repository and copy the raw HTML code. Then go back to the GoFish dashboard and click Create New Template. We're going to name it Instagram Alert, leave the envelope sender as default, and paste the HTML code into the editor. If you click on source, you'll see the rendered version of the email. And as you can see, we're replicating the exact look of a real Instagram alert. The code will automatically pull in the recipient's name from the user list, making it feel personalized. The most important part is the link. When the user clicks it, they'll be redirected to our ngrok phishing page, not the real Instagram site.
Now let's write a suitable and urgent subject line that fits our phishing context and grabs the user's attention. For example, we could say something like, urgent action required, suspicious login activity on your Instagram account, and click save template. Now that we have the alert ready to send via email, we need a landing page that looks exactly like the official Instagram login page. To do that, go to Instagram in your browser, right click and select inspect element. Then find the main login section, right click the code and choose edit as HTML. Copy the entire HTML code, make a few tweaks to suit our phishing setup, like modifying the form action to point to our server. Now go back to the GoFish dashboard, click create new landing page and name it something like Instagram login. Paste the HTML code into the editor. Make sure to check the boxes for capture submitted data and capture passwords. These are critical. For the redirect URL, we'll enter the actual Instagram URL. This way, after the user submits their credentials, they'll be redirected to the real Instagram site, making the attack look seamless and less suspicious. Then just click save page and we're done. Now we have everything in place to run the phishing campaign. Technically, we're ready. Next, let's define the target. To do that, go to the Users and Groups section in the GoFish dashboard. Click Create New Group, give it a name like Instagram Targets, and add the target details, such as the name and email address of the victim. Once you've filled in the info, click Save OK. Now we've reached the final step. Let's create the campaign. Give it a name like Instagram Alert, then select the email template and landing page we created earlier. Now, the most crucial part, the URL. This is what makes the phishing attack work. Go to your terminal, copy the public URL that Ngrok provided, and paste it into the URL field. Next, choose the sending profile we created, and finally, select the target group. Once everything is set, click Launch Campaign, and we're live. In the campaign dashboard, you can see the results, whether the email was sent successfully, whether it was opened, if the user clicked the link, and if they submitted any data. We can also confirm this from the status section. Now that our link has been sent to the target user, let's go ahead and check the inbox to see how the email looks. All right, as you can see, we were able to send the email to the target's inbox without any restrictions. Also, notice how we successfully hid the actual email address. It appears exactly like it's coming from Instagram security. You can only see the actual email address if you expand the sender details, but trust me, most people never check that. They just panic and click the link. So now the user sees this email, gets nervous, and clicks the reset link. Now imagine this could be your bank account, your YouTube channel, or anything else important. The real target here isn't just the system, it's the human. That's the power of social engineering. Once the user clicks the link, they're taken to our spoofed login page, which looks exactly like the official Instagram login. And let's be honest, most people never check the actual URL. They go ahead and type in their username and password. Now as soon as the user submits their credentials, we instantly capture the data, and just like we planned, they get redirected to the real Instagram website. No one suspects the thing, right? Now, if we go back to our GoFish dashboard, you can see that the submitted data has come through. To view it, just expand the entry, and you'll see a timeline of the attack, along with all the details. Expand further, and there it is, the username and password the user entered. See how easy it is to get hacked? Just like that, hackers can hack humans, not just systems. And that brings us to the end of the video. We've successfully completed a full phishing campaign from start to finish. Once again, guys, this video is purely for ethical hacking and awareness purposes. Don't do anything stupid and get caught. Use your skills responsibly. This was just a basic phishing attack. In future videos, we'll go even deeper, like bypassing MFA and other advanced security mechanisms. So until then, we'll meet again. If you found this video helpful, leave a like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe for more content like this. See you in the next one.